all of our Google Meet meetings so that if you ever, for whatever reason, aren't able to make it to one of the meetings, you can still go back and watch the video of me going through the notes or the material from that day and catch up on anything that you may have missed. I had a lot of people last term tell me that this was super helpful and that they really liked it because it made them less stressed about missing part of the Google Meet class. All of the meetings that I record will eventually be posted up on our Google Classroom. So can everybody see my screen of the Biology B Classroom right now? Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe. I can't see you guys anymore, so I need somebody to say, yes, I can see. Yeah, I'll yes, I, I, I can see it. Okay, yes. good. Again, I'm also still learning a little bit about how to use Google Meet, so I'm glad to know I got that right. So our Biology B classroom on the Google Classroom, this is where all of the notes, the video lectures, and the assignments for this class will be posted. So obviously all of you guys have done a good job already of getting to the classroom and being involved. Every class day before we meet, I'll try to remember to put out this reminder just with the Google Meet link posted right in there. So you can just click on it in order to get into the meeting. If you ever, for whatever reason, can't find that link um, or you're having trouble looking it up, you can also click on this meet link right here. It'll take you to the exact same place. So as a class, we meet in Biology B on Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 8.05 to 9.30 p.m. So this does not mean that this is the only time that you should ever come to this Google Classroom and look stuff out, as we'll talk about in a second. Um, but that is when we're going to be either for the people who are doing this remotely, will be on the Google Meet, or for some people who are here in person, these are the days we'll be meeting this term, Tuesdays and Thursdays, starting at 8.05 p.m. Okay. So the main, this that was the stream we were just looking at, which is sort of like the announcements page. Main place where you guys are going to be looking for your information is going to be the classwork tab. So the classwork is going to have all of the different things that I'm posting that you guys will need for this class. So right now mine will probably look a little bit different than yours because mine has some of the assignments that haven't been posted yet. Everything that is in color and highlighted are things that you guys should be able to see as well. So I posted the notes that we're going to go over today, the notes that we're going to go over on Thursday, and then the daily assignments that are being posted kind of once every day. So hopefully, if you've gotten a chance to, you take a look at the Biology B syllabus, which we'll talk about a little bit later on today, but that has a lot of really great information in it about the, the policies for the class this term. And then once we're done with our meeting today, I'll post a recording of everything that we talked about in the class notes videos tab or topic on here. So every single time we meet as a class, I'll record the video and post it under this topic. But just to jump into things and kind of introduce you guys to the class. All right, can you guys see the welcome to Biology B at like full screen? Yes. 
Excellent. So this is biology B class. It's half of the biology credit that you'll need at the Excel Center. The other part being biology A, which some of you may have taken already, and some of you may take at some future point in your career here. So as a lot of you have already figured out, here is my email, michael.stanley at goodwillexcel.org. So this email is posted in a bunch of different places that I'll show you kind of around the classroom. And it is probably one of the best ways to get in touch with me. And so I check my email pretty often. I have it go directly to my phone as well. So if you have a question about something in the class, or like you may have noticed, your first assignment was to send me an email, this is the place to send it to. So today, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about me and kind of what you need to know for me. Um, normally, we would talk about you individually if we we're all here together in class, but we may kind of skip that for today. I'll give you guys an overview of some of the really important online policies in terms of taking online classes at the Excel Center this term. And then at the very end, we'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff that we'll go over in class this term. So like I said earlier, my name is Michael Stanley. You guys call me Mr. Stanley or Mr. Michael or even just Mr. or Sir. I can usually figure out who you're talking to. And so I actually grew up in the Austin area. So I wasn't born here, but I was raised in North Austin. Went to elementary school, middle school, high school, all around here. And then for college, went to Texas A&M University to study zoology, which is like animal focused biology. And then I finished up college and said, I just finished 12 years of high school and four years of college. Do you know what I wanna do now? Even more school. So I ended up going to grad school, which is a school that you can go to after you finish college except I didn't stay in Texas, I decided to travel to Ohio. So I went to a school called Miami University, which is confusing because it's not that Miami. I didn't go to Florida. It's the Miami University that's in Ohio. It's right around kind of down here. And Ohio was pretty cool. I made a lot of good friends there, um, including the woman who would eventually become my wife. We got married in Ohio while we were both going to school there. But you guys, Ohio is, is too cold there. Like the weather today, it's like that from about the beginning of October to early December. And then it's super freezing cold from like December to February. And then it's cold like this again from February to like into April even. That's too much, too cold. I don't like it. I missed Austin. My wife came with me a couple times down here to visit Austin and she really liked it. So we decided to move back to Texas. And so that's what we did about a year ago, I think a little over a year ago. Moved back to Texas, moved back to Austin, pretty close to where my parents were living actually. And one of the reasons that we wanted to move back here was to be close to my family because my wife was actually pregnant at the time that we moved. And so shortly after we moved down here, uh, my daughter was born. So this is little baby Charlotte. Um, this She's only a few days old in this picture, but obviously that was a while ago. That was over a year ago. So she's about 15 months old now um, and looks a little bit closer to this. So this was us during the summer we had some fancy pictures taken around her birthday. And so we all really love living in Texas. Um, we, we recently moved and bought a house, but we're still only about 15, 20 minutes away from my parents. So they can come help us out with the baby, which they do a lot, which is super awesome and great. 
And I love being here also because it means I get to work at the Excel Center with all of you, which is always a really great time. This is my second year teaching here. And even despite all the crazy online COVID stuff, um, I'm still really, really happy to be here with you guys. So normally, if everybody was like in here in person, we'd go around the room and we'd learn a little bit more uh, about each other. Um, but since we're all kind of spread out in person and online, we'll go ahead and kind of skip over this part for today. So this class is biology class. And biology is the study of living things. So it's all about asking questions about how living things work and operate. So in this class, we're going to explore what kinds of things go into making up plants and animals. How is it that we stay alive and make more copies of ourselves? Why doesn't everything look the same? Why don't all humans look the exact same as each other? How did we end up becoming humans versus all the other different animals and plants that are out there? And how is it that different animals and plants interact with each other in their environment? So that's sort of some of the basic questions that'll go into some of the different things we're gonna look at in this class. So we'll talk about some of that more in a little bit. But the first and probably most important thing that I wanted to go over with you guys tonight has to do with counting attendance. So in the past, you were required to have an 80% attendance rate at the Excel Center in order to earn credit for the course. In term one, when we did online classes for the first eight weeks, that got a little bit more relaxed um, because there was a lot of craziness going on with how we're supposed to take attendance and what we're gonna be doing on all the different ways. And then Skyward was messing up some people's attendance classes. So that didn't necessarily happen for everybody in term one. But in term two, the word has come down from our bosses that we're meant to be really, really strict on this attendance policy this year. You have to attend 80% of the classes in order to earn credit over every single week. So how can you do that? How can you make sure that you're keeping up with all of the attendance that you need to? Well, you guys are always do, already doing part of it. So on these Google Meet class days, which again is Tuesday and Thursday at 8.05 p.m., you're expected to attend those every Tuesday and Thursday. So just like if we were still doing school, you'd come to school every day, you're still expected to come to these Google Meet classes every Tuesday and Thursday as well. What does this mean for Monday and Wednesday? Does that mean that you can just take those days off, not do any work, not worry about it because you're not seeing Mr. Stanley that day? No, don't do that. That's bad. So even on days when we're not meeting, I still have it left as Zoom. So even when we're not on Google Classroom, if it's a Monday or a Wednesday, you're still required to earn attendance for that day. Now, if you're not seeing me in person or over the computer, how can you get attendance for that day? You do it by completing a daily assignment. So just like the first couple assignments were things like send Mr. Stanley an email or send Mr. Stanley a text message, that is how for the first day I was able to track your guys' attendance. So on the days that we're not meeting, either in person or on this Google Meet, you're still required to do this daily assignment in order to get your attendance credit for that day. So every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there will be a short, simple daily assignment posted on the Google Classroom, like a short little homework, essentially. So on Monday and Wednesdays, they go up so that you can do that assignment and get your attendance on Monday and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I still post homework because if for whatever reason you're not able 
to come to the Google Meet meeting or the class meeting. That doesn't mean that you're screwed out of getting any attendance for that day. You can still get attendance by completing the Tuesday or Thursday assignment. So while it's best to come in person to as many meetings as you can, if you don't come to a meeting, you can still earn attendance by completing that daily assignment. Once I see that you turn something in, I can say, all right, that person did some work in this class today. They get an attendance check mark for them. So in order to keep up with your attendance, you should be making sure to check the Google Classroom every day. Come to as many of these Google Meet classes as you can. And on days when you aren't able to come or you, it's a Monday, Wednesday, and we don't have a meeting, you can complete the daily assignment and get your attendance credit that way. One of the other reasons why we're trying to be really strict on this here at the beginning is that in term two, our, the people who run our attendance system are currently working on a system that will automatically drop you from the class if you have more than five absences. So if you miss more than five days of classes, over the course of the next seven weeks, you could potentially be automatically kicked out of the class, no matter how much work that you've already done or what your attendance was like until that point. If you have over five absences, you could potentially be automatically dropped from the class. So how do you make sure that this doesn't happen? check in to our Google Classroom and do an assignment every day. Again, if you come in person to one of these classes, you don't necessarily have to do the assignment that got scheduled that day, but you will have to do that assignment eventually. So all the assignments that I'm giving you guys are for a grade in the grade book. It doesn't necessarily matter to me when you complete those assignments as long as you do them, but you'll only get attendance credit on the day when you turn them in. So if you accidentally miss Monday's assignment, but eventually by Thursday you finish it and you turn it in on Thursday, you only get attendance credit for Thursday. You can't go back and earn attendance for Monday. So because that is so important. I wanted to take a pause right there really quick. So does anybody have any questions on the attendance kind of policy or how taking attendance in this class works? Fernando, do you have a question? Yes, sir. What is that? Uh, we take classes four days a week, right? Mm -hmm. From Monday to Thursday. And yep. Then the assignment means work, homework? Or work? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, assignment means like homework. Okay. Exactly. So, yeah, so I have uh, Fernando with me in the classroom right now, and he was asking about if there's an assignment, if there's a homework or assignment for every day of the week and yes. So every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there will be a assignment, a homework that gets posted on the class. And if you complete that homework and turn it in on that day, then you get attendance credit for that day. All right. Well, you really came up going to the, the class the one day, mm -hmm. we can take the, the assignment, we can do it for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So he was also just asking that even if it's like a Tuesday, but you can't come in class, you can't be here on the call or in person and get your attendance that way, you can still do 
the Tuesday assignment. And if you turn it in on Tuesday, you'll get attendance credit for Tuesday. It doesn't count against you if you do the assignment versus coming to the class. You get the same attendance either way. All right, good questions. Thank you, Fernando. Anybody else, any other questions about attendance, what it means or what you need to do? All right, awesome. So like I said, the easiest way to keep up with your attendance is just to check our Google Classroom every day. And if you can, do that daily assignment. So let's say something happens on a Monday or Tuesday and you aren't able to complete the work on that day. Yes, you may miss out on getting your attendance for that day, you should still do that work and turn it in as makeup work. So any of the assignments, any of the homework that you miss during the week, you can still turn them in to get credit, to get a grade. So like I mentioned, all of the assignments, all the homework that gets posted is something that I'm gonna be grading and putting in the grade book at some point. And so if you want to pass this class, then getting all of those assignments turned in and not having any missing is definitely a good step in that direction. So each assignment that I post up on the Google Classroom is gonna say that it is due on that day. So like Wednesday's assignment that's going up tomorrow, it'll be posted at 12.01 a.m on Wednesday, so in about like, what, three, three and a half hours. And it'll say it is due by 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday. Essentially, that's just to make it easier for me to keep track of who turns it in on Wednesday versus who turns it in later. So even if you don't get it turned in on Wednesday, even though you missed out on the attendance, you can still get it turned in on Thursday or Friday in order to get the grade. And I don't count it against you if, it, if you turn it in a couple days or even a couple weeks late. I just care that you got it turned in at some point. That's what's most important to me. So even if you do miss an assignment here or there, or maybe say you come to the Thursday class and so you got your attendance, but you don't do the Thursday assignment, you can still work on it over the weekend or over the next week and get it turned in on some day. But again, going back to attendance, you only get credit for attendance on the day that you turn in the work. So even if it was Monday's assignment, if you turn it in on Wednesday, you only get attendance credit for Wednesday. All right, even if you turn in assignments all at the same time, you only get the attendance credit for the day that you turn it in. All right, so I've mentioned all these different daily assignments and homework and stuff that you guys are going to be working on, but how can you actually do it? How are you going to be able to complete your work for this class? Well, because of all the flexibility of doing this online stuff, one of the nice things about this is that there's actually multiple different ways that you can complete the work, whichever way works best for you. So usually your homework will be posted in two different forms on the Google Classroom. There will be a Google Form version, which is like a sort of like a survey version of your homework that you can fill out. This is probably the easiest version for a lot of people to do, especially if you're doing it on your phone. The Google form is a good way to do it. That's like the purple version. Or 
the Google Doc, which is like the blue version, it's more like the traditional worksheet. So you'll see the whole sheet as if it was like a sheet of paper, and you can go in and type in your answers underneath each question if you want. So those are probably the most common ways that people complete their assignments. If you don't really like working on the computer, you'd rather do it old school pen and paper style. If you have a printer at home, you can print out the worksheet and fill it out by hand if you want. That works totally fine as well. Or if you don't have a printer at home, you can write down your answers on a sheet of paper that clearly has your name and the answers very clearly labeled and easy for me to read. And that is another way that you can do your homework as well. All of these are all equally valid. So you're not gonna get points off if you do it one way or another. I am more than happy to accept your work, whether or not you complete it on the computer or with your own pen and paper. So once you complete your work, how do you turn it in? How do you make sure that I can see it? There's three different main ways. First one is if you complete the Google form or the Google doc on your phone or computer, you can submit that to me on the Google form. On the bottom, there's literally just a big submit button that'll automatically send a notification to me that you did the work. If you do it on the Google Doc, there is a turn it in button on the Google Classroom where you can click that and say, I'm done. I'm ready for Mr. Stanley to look at it. Or you can also upload a picture of your work. So if you write down your answers on a printed sheet of paper or your own paper, you can take a picture of their answers on your phone and then send me or upload that picture onto the assignment page on the Google Classroom. You can also always email me a picture or a version of your work. Or if you really want to, you can even text me a picture. So if you write down your answers on like a sheet of paper, take a picture with your phone and then text that picture to me, I'm more than happy to accept your work that way as well. That is totally fine by me. The Google Form and the Google Doc ones are probably the easiest to turn just because it automatically sends me a notification saying that you submitted it. And it's right there on the classroom where I can see it. But if it's easier for you to email or text it to me, that totally works fine for me as well. All right, any questions from anybody about how to do work, turning in work using the Google Classroom for your work? Anything like that, anything anybody is still a little not sure about? All right, it doesn't sound like it at the moment. So we will continue on. Um, before we go back to the Google Classroom, I wanna show you guys a couple different things on that. I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of some of the stuff that we'll be talking about in class this term. So the first thing that we're going to go over is DNA, which you may have heard the word DNA before, especially if you watch like a lot of crime shows, but not exactly what it is. So we'll talk about how DNA is, what it's made out of, how do we make copies of it, and how do we use DNA in order to make other pieces and structures that go into our bodies. We'll then move on to the cells. So cells are the tiny little individual pieces that make up all the different parts of your body. So I'll talk about the ways that cells grow and divide, specifically how they either make copies of themselves or make special types of copies that are used whenever we're ready 
to make some more individuals, make some more humans. We'll talk about genetics or how things are inherited from parents to their children, how exactly the different parts of your DNA are related to how tall you are, what color hair that you have, how similar you are to your mom versus your dad, all sorts of good stuff like that. Um, and then we'll talk about the probabilities of parents passing on certain traits or certain um, characteristics to their children. And then in the final section, we'll talk about evolution and classification, which is sort of the idea of how do we end up with all of these different types of plants and animals on planet Earth? How are they related to each other? And what are some of the similarities and some of the differences between seemingly unrelated groups, like humans versus whales versus bats? And so we'll talk about how do we put kind of plants and animals into different groups and where did we all come from? How did we all develop into the plants and animals that you see around us on Earth today. So that is sort of a tiny little basic overview of some of the different stuff that we'll be talking about over the next six to seven weeks or so. Um, a couple other things that I wanted to show you on the Google Classroom. Like I mentioned, the syllabus is up here right at the top of the classwork section. And if there's ever something you forget about your the attendance policies or how things work, you can always go back and read through the syllabus. So the top part of it has a lot of good information, including my email, my phone number, which days that our class meets and a direct link to our Google meeting room if you ever need to look that back up. It has some information about the Google Classroom, which you guys are already a part of, so great job there so far. And then it has another section reminding you about the attendance rules. So again, even though we're only meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's still going to be assigned work on Monday and Wednesday that you'll be responsible for, as well as work on Tuesdays and Thursdays that you can use to earn attendance, even if you miss the Google Meet. So as long as you keep an eye on your Google Classroom and on your school email, so all of the assignments that get posted on the classroom should send a notification to your school email. So that's another way that you guys can kind of keep track and make sure that you're keeping up with everything for the class. And then finally, we have just sort of a reminder about, oops, sorry, completing and turning in your work so that you can either fill out the Google form or the Google doc or print out your own version of the worksheet or write down your own answers on a piece of paper at home. And then either submit that Google form or that Google doc directly to me on the Google classroom. Um, you can also upload a picture of that you took of your homework onto the Google Classroom assignment, or you can email me a picture of your work to my school email. You can also text that picture to my school phone number. Oh, one good thing that the syllabus brings up um, that I didn't mention in that notes that we looked at is grading for these online courses. So, you turn something into me. It might take a couple days, but I will look through it, let you know which questions that you missed on it and what the correct answer was, and then return it back to you with it being graded. 
And so I'll give a comment saying, hey, here's what you missed. And once I assign you a grade, I'll return that to you on the Google Classroom so that you can see what it is and how you're doing. However, your Google Classroom grades are not your official final grades for the class. So they won't directly tell you if you are passing or failing the class. In order to do that, you'll need to check Skyward. The Skyward is where you can look at your schedule. It's where you can look at your attendance, mm -hmm. where you can look at your grades for each class. And so I'm gonna be keeping track of your grades both on Google Classroom and on Skyward. Skyward is where your official class grade is going to be. The official grade that's going on your transcript and into the gradebook is on Skyward. So if you haven't logged in to Skyward before, you can reach out to your life coach and know the username and password that you need to use. Um, it can also help you reset your username and password if you're having trouble logging in from an account that you had already set up. But Skyward is where your official gradebook is going to be posted. So you should have all the same grades on Skyward as in Google Classroom. Um, but Skyward does, I'll use it to calculate things a little bit differently and assign more or less points to certain assignments. So if you want to know how you're doing in the class, if you want to email me and ask me, that's totally fine. But you can also check on your Skyward. All right, and then we just sort of have a, another overview of what we're going to be going through in this course down here. So all of that information is on the syllabus. If you ever want to go read through it, on your own to kind of refresh yourself about some of the different policies for this course. And then, like I said, once we're done here today, I'll post our uh, video of me talking about this stuff in this class notes video section of the Google Classroom. So each meeting that we do, I'll make sure to record it and post a video of that meeting on the Google Classroom if you want to go back and watch it again later. Um, so I think the final thing that I wanted to show you is uh, different types of assignments that you're going to get. So like I mentioned, so tomorrow I'll go ahead and give you guys a head up, heads up since you're the ones in class today. Tomorrow, your assignment is going to be a syllabus quiz. So a simple five sentence quiz about some of the important information that is on our syllabus right up here. So there's two different forms of the syllabus quiz that you can pick which one you want to do. There's the Google Forms version, which is the version that if you're doing it on a phone, this is the one that's easier to do. Um, and it prevents, presents you with the different questions and their own different little sections, as well as places for you to go in and type in your answers. And so you just go through and answer the questions one by one, and then hit submit down here at the bottom. And not only, will a copy of your answers be emailed right to your school email when you do that, but it'll also send me a notification that you completed and submitted this assignment. So that way I can make sure to stay on top of you getting attendance credit for completing that and also going back to it later, later and assigning you a grade. So that is the Google Forms version of what most of your assignments will look like. And I'll try to put as many of your assignments into Google Form versions as I possibly can. If 
you don't like that one as much and you like it a little bit more old school, there is also the Google Doc version of the syllabus quiz. where for each one of these questions, you can go in and type in your answer, just like you would if you were writing it or you're typing something on your computer. And so each of you will get your own copy of a blank version of the worksheet. And if you want to do the Google Doc version, you just go in, write in your answers to the five different questions. And then when you go back to the Google Classroom, there will be a button that says turn in. I think it's either turn it in or turn in assignment. And that'll send me another notification that says this person is done with their Google Doc and they're ready for you to look at it, Mr. Stanley. So most of the assignments, those daily assignments that you're doing for your attendance will be posted with these two different versions, the Google Forms version and the Google Docs version. And so you're free to use either one of those that you like the most and feel the most comfortable with, but don't forget that you can always also write things down the old school pen and paper way and then send me a picture of whatever your answers are for that assignment. Alrighty. Um, trying to think if there's anything else in the Google Classroom that I really wanted to make sure to share with you guys. I think I hit all of the important stuff. There we go. Um, so does anybody have any questions to kind of wrap it up? Anything about the biology B class, the syllabus, the grading, the attendance policies, anything else that you want to know about this class for term two? No, <laughs> everything is good. Oh, awesome. That's good to hear. Thanks, Yusra. Mm -hmm. 